All right, we are live once again for another live stream. Yep, uh, a little bit late today, three minutes late. Sorry about that. Uh, if you have been uh, waiting eagerly in the chat, you can say hello to us so we can know that you're there. Um, the topic for today's Hangout is going to be raw food recipes, raw vegan recipes our favorites and some of the some of our thoughts regarding making recipes and uh you know what benefits recipes can have but also some of the problems that arise when you start making recipes and especially raw vegan recipes and some of our experiences in the past right yeah we have uh, certainly been making lots of different things uh over the past starting out maybe really extravagant and then slowly simplifying but it's all yeah. been, we've always done recipes of different kinds. Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, so before we just start, we'll just let it, you know, give it a little bit of time for people to, to get in. Mm -hmm. uh, the crowd to arrive. arrive. Yeah. Um, as I said already, if, you, uh, if you're there watching, you say hello in the chat if you feel like it. And we look forward to interacting with you there. Uh, if you're watching the recording of this, which is going to go on YouTube uh, later in a few weeks, uh, then uh, know that you can join the next one live in the chat by going to patreon.com and, and joining us there. So we do this every month for our patrons where, they, where we interact with them uh, in the chat. And then, yeah, we have other things, exclusive content as well as on Patreon. So it's a rainy day here today in this i'm um yeah it's kind of depressing it's just dark and rainy yeah you don't really have many days left do you no i'm coming home yeah coming home in uh four five days or something like that right i guess so yeah it's not long uh here it's uh, pretty amazing it's uh, really sunny and um our grandfather is 80 years today so it's gonna be a big party uh, over yonder um, I'm not there I'm gonna be there but uh, mother and father is gonna be there mother and yeah. father <laughs> yeah when it comes to English in Norwegian we say mama or papa which is like mama and papa yeah. but it doesn't translate as doesn't sound as as well in I guess usually I say mom and dad which sounds mm, yeah. a lot better uh, out Gester, Old Gester, Oud Gester is in Audrey. The chat. Audrey. Audrey. Fine. That's, nice. That's cool. Uh, so I don't have it there. It says group chat here, but I don't have anything. So that means I have really? to open up. The... Just open up the live stream and do mm. pop out chat. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Talk about something. Yeah. Um, I've been biking. So that's why I have uh, lines on my forehead. Um, and I've been painting, which is why I have lines on my nose because I'm wearing a mask. But other than that, I'm in fairly good mood right now. And uh, all shall be good. I have the chat now as well. Hello, Audrey. Nice to have you with us. Um, all, right. all right, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's rewind our whole life. We've been, uh, we, we liked food, we've liked food. We, we have definitely liked to prepare food as well. I mean, we used to make pizzas, our own pizzas. And especially when we got into veganism, we got really proud of our pizza. Mm -hmm. um, we made an effort to find the best ingredients and make really quality stuff and always been playing around. I especially have been playing around with recipes and playing around in the kitchen my whole life. So, um, yeah, I was a real taco expert, uh, making tacos. Yeah. Uh, the, the weird uh, kind of Americanized Tex-Mex taco, but anyway. Um, but so, yeah, yes, pizza. so yeah, we've been we've been into recipes for sure. As we got into raw food, um, we got exposed, of course, to the world of recipe making in the raw vegan world, and uh, the first recipes that we started making i guess was uh salads right i mean when we first got into raw food except for like juices i don't know if you want to call it juices a recipe but um, 
we, we made a lot of juices, we made some smoothies, but well, you uh, could say that. I mean, there, there is something to be said for juices. I mean, there's, there's certain types of uh, juice combinations or vegetable combinations which are really like what? Well, the, the, there's one that comes to mind, and that's the what was it, Dan the Man's favorite, like celery, ginger, lemon, ginger blast, yeah. I think For apples example. as well. Apples are really nice. Some apples, some celery, yeah, some ginger. Hot peppers as well. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and salads. We were <laughs> some really hot juice. Yeah. Terrible. <laughs> I remember putting like habaneros in there and stuff. Yeah. Dan puts like seven habaneros in like one, and we put like half and can't almost yeah. survive. Why would um, anyone do that? So uh, salads definitely. Uh, you know. I remember in the beginning, I liked putting a lot of um, seeds, nuts and seeds in the in the salad. So it would be like lots of finely chopped greens and then lots of different stuff and and um, and a lot of nuts and seeds. But then as as we progressed, I guess, through uh, the raw vegan diet and learned more about, well, this is probably going a little bit too far ahead now, but I was going to say how we learned about low fat and we we realized yeah. you know it wasn't really didn't really feel ideal to eat a lot of nuts and seeds. No, because like in I, I guess in the first hmm, things progressed really quickly, but I think in the first maybe three or four months we were definitely doing not not high fat by far. We were really focusing on fruit and and yeah. greens at that time as well, but. Uh, we didn't think much about fat uh, content and stuff, so we did use, as you say, a lot of uh, nuts and seeds and stuff. But yeah, it didn't yeah. feel optimal. Every time we ate more nuts, we always were like, oh, "This is kind of heavy." Yeah, uh, and but we didn't really learn that, that lesson completely until until well into the journey i would say it took a, took a took a half a year to a year even even a couple of years even as much as 3 years to fully uh, feel the effects of a high fat diet especially when it, well we weren't eating a high fat diet but high fat meals let's say when we were having raw vegan um, high fat meals at like restaurants and stuff but without getting into much to the health stuff today let's just keep it talking about the recipes Mm -hmm. um because we would go to restaurants right in the beginning we would go to these raw food restaurants sometimes and it would be all these fancy recipes with uh, lots of nuts and seeds and uh oil sometimes as well there and lots of dehydrated stuff with uh you know like uh flax crackers or all kinds of seed crackers de dehydrated with with nut butter on top and some pesto and and then some fresh vegetables on top there and you would have this sandwich and it would just taste so incredible and i think that's some of that's one of the things about raw food recipes when you make these concentrated dehydrated nuts and seed based dishes is that it's shockingly tasty like it's very intense in terms of taste it's even more intense than cooked normal cooked food is because it's so low in water content after that dehydration and the nuts and the seeds and the and the spices and the salt and pepper and the garlic and everything in there it just makes when you go to Rovin recipe uh, restaurants you'll know if you have tried it i don't know what about you audrey have you been uh, tell us about some kind of have you been to some Rovin res restaurants do you know what i'm talking about i mean this it's extremely concentrated food yeah it's interesting and... because it's as you say it's uh, you can make it you can make a uh, cooked dish with really bad ingredients and um it won't taste anything uh, and similarly it could be said about raw foods but uh because you're not cooking the ingredients or rather if you're just dehydrating them um I, that that uh, thought got you lost your train of thought yes uh, but the point is you can have some extremely concentrated tastes uh mm. tastes not necessarily just salt or like pepper or stuff yeah, like that because i think what you were probably going to say some something like this was that uh, when you when you cook something you cook a lot of the flavor out that's that's what happens even when you're steaming even but especially if you're boiling and you know a lot when you go into a house someone's cooking 
the whole house smells wonderful, right? Well, that's because all the taste, so some of the taste anyway, is going out into the air. Um, whereas with, uh, as you said, with uh, dehydration, you're preserving all the taste. You're just losing the water, making the taste more concentrated. So a dehydrated paprika is is way is very 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 concentrated in taste and tastes amazing. If you mix that in with with uh, if you blend some peppers, paprikas with the uh, cashew nuts, for example, you get this thick. And then you dehydrate that and make crackers. That would be so intense in flavor. Mm -hmm. It's actually but I think also the, yeah. there's a lot of salt also in a lot of raw food uh, recipes, and I think that's uh, kind of um, not ideal. Yeah, it's very. I mean, we quickly learned that when we go to raw food restaurants, you do not feel good afterwards or the next day. Even it's it's very high in salt, as you said, and it's very. It's concentrated, as in the, the the taste is really intense, as I just said, but it's almost too intense. You know, after a meal at a raw food restaurant, I feel almost just like, wow, that was just too intense, and um, and it's so salty, my mouth will be dry, and then the next 24, 36 hours, you just have so much fat going through your system from all those nuts and seeds that you end up feeling mm -hmm. like crap. But uh, yeah. Audrey, uh, Audrey says that there's none, no restaurants where I live, but a few, but there are a few raw vegan salad options at some restaurants. They are very fortified with oil and fats and crazy flavors. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I definitely rec recommend if you get the chance at one point, Audrey, to go to a, to a raw vegan restaurant that does like really good gourmet food. It's worth trying because it is an interesting um gastronomical experience i i'd say for for humans <laughs> but it is certainly i would it's not the best health wise but mm -hmm. um i thought you were going to recommend one recommend a restaurant well that depends where you are in the world but yeah. um i mean there's there's a really good one called Sadana's Kitchen in Sydney, right, Matt? We when we went to yeah. Sydney, that, that's probably the best one I've ever been to, Sadana's Kitchen. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. It was heavy, heavy on the nuts. And we did not feel amazing afterwards, that's for sure. Uh, yeah. But uh, taste-wise, insane. Insanely good taste. Um, Audrey also says uh, she considers them maybe transition foods for those people who are new to veganism. Load up on the stuff to substitute for that full feeling you get with meat dishes. And I think this is kind of like yes and no, because you do get a well i don't know if it is a substitute really because it's you you don't really feel that full because it's so concentrated that it just feels heavy rather than being full but yeah i guess if you're looking for that meat feeling then nuts can sort of do the trick yeah i mean uh, maybe um some but I, I i always found it to be like unnecessary to go through that transition we, we just went through it for fun i guess we just played around with the gourmet dishes but we never really felt the need to to really embrace it because we were just enjoying the, the way the fruit made us feel yeah um i think though for some people who knows maybe, maybe it can help um yeah psychologically doing, maybe yeah doing things step by step but uh then again you need to also focus on the the fact that it's uh, it's not just about raw you know you can eat um, a raw dish with broccoli and cauliflower and it's going to be really hard to digest and it's going to be lots of salt in it and it might have an oily dressing and it might not be healthier than a loaf of bread yeah seriously I mean, there might be much worse like uh, i mean some some of these raw food dishes i would much rather seriously i would much rather eat a loaf of bread then uh then eat some of those dishes at the raw food restaurant uh if i'm looking for like if i'm looking to feel good if i'm looking for an experience in a raw food restaurant then obviously i want the raw food restaurant experience but if i'm looking to feel good and the choices between these high fat gourmet dishes or a loaf of bread definitely a loaf of bread <laughs> yeah. um the she lives in ohio yeah cool that's well if you head out you know if you head out to to LA or something, then obviously that's there's loads of raw vegan restaurants there. Mm -hmm. The big box restaurants miss the target. I'm with you guys and how you see it. Yeah. 
cool. Um, but Matt, let's talk about how some of the recipes that we made though, because now that we mentioned, you know, the health aspects, I guess, and of, of eating these high nut dishes, um, we have definitely played around at the kitchen and we took it pretty seriously. We really enjoyed mm -hmm. uh, making good raw vegan dishes, even stuff that was low in nuts and seeds. Um, yeah, for sure. We did have a dehydrator. We still have a dehydrator. We don't really use it, but um, we played around with the dehydrator for a while. And one of the things that we made was that pizza, you know, Chris Kendall's uh, nut free pizza base kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's actually a pretty good. Um, that's uh, there's that's all right to make. Uh, not many problems with that, actually. Um, shall I explain it? Yeah. Uh, but basically, again, it's Chris Kendall uh, recipe. What you do is you you spiralize zucchini or like squash um, to make uh, lots of noodles, basically, and then you dump some pretty simple tomato sauce i think on the noodles and then you call oh, you of, mix it you mix it yeah you mix it and then you put this whole uh bowl of stuff onto a dehydrator sheet mush it out to a, to form a pizza base kind of and then you dehydrate that whole thing yeah and, and then so you turn it around maybe a couple of times as well and press it down further and mm -hmm. Uh, it takes a bit of time, but it's uh, yeah, it turned out really good. We made it at our cabin ones. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Not as good as a real pizza, but well, you know, it's 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 uh, not about it's a real pizza. Totally. It is a real pizza. It is a real pizza. It's just a different ingredients and different preparation. So yeah, and honestly, there are like raw food has a certain like part of me wants to say that a raw paprika is much better to eat straight up than uh, cooked paprika uh, when it comes to taste and you know some people might enjoy uh, raw food dishes much more than uh, cooked food dishes yeah I honestly just, loved that pizza yeah it was really good we should make it again actually it was it was quite enjoyable the negative thing of course that it's not really high in calories so you need to eat lots of something else as well fruit for example and it doesn't really mix that well with the pizza, even though the pizza is purely fruit. But yeah, um, let's not talk about the health aspects anymore because it just let's talk about the recipes. Um, so There's, that's one thing that we made a lot. What? No, I was just just gonna say that really early on, I think probably the first kind of recipe, as we said, uh, we started out with salads, and I remember when you actually were at this cabin, uh, and I was at home uh, watching. Uh, durian rider um at that point i was eating huge enormous salads um like just t took an hour to eat and uh obviously you need dressing for it um yeah and the dressing basically consisted and i think these are the two main ingredients in most raw uh food dishes tomato and mango yeah i just like the golden that's really good mix because we, uh, yeah, we did spend almost three years actually of our six year long raw food journey uh, eating salads. I mean, the first two or three years, we ate a lot of salads. We're trying to get the greens in and everything. And that's a whole nother discussion. But um, yeah, we would, we would make dressings and that would be one of our favorite dressing, you know, put in a, some mango, you know, one mango maybe, and then a whole bunch of cherry tomatoes mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit of basil. Uh, and maybe even a little bit of dehydrated, like sun-dried tomatoes or something as well. Yeah, because you, you want it to be kind of thick. And that, here comes the um, thing about raw food, how uh, the ingredients are, it's insanely important that it's high quality ingredients. Yeah. Because if you have eaten, which you probably have, a bad tomato, it's not worth eating. It's like it's crap and if yeah you when you cook food, when you cook food you just you, you cook it all up and then it mixes everything it becomes homogenous and then you add lots of salt and spices and stuff right and then it all tastes the same and it's all stimulating anyway but when you're eating when you're eating real food and when you when your dressing is just going to be blended tomatoes yeah well then they, those tomatoes better be good and that's what we realized we have to that's sort of we i remember we we're talking about 
uh, how if you're a chef, if you're into cooking and preparing food, anyone into gastronomy uh, should try out making raw food recipes on a regular basis because it will teach them so much about ingredients because it becomes all about the ingredients. The ingredients becomes the most important thing when you're doing raw food recipes, whereas when you're cooking, the ingredients are important, yes, but you can sort of get away with less lower quality because you're using things like salt and other stimulants and you're cooking and concentrating it. But when you're making like fresh raw food dishes, like salads with dressing and soups and that sort of thing, it's gotta be quality. Yeah, it's, um, uh, I, when you mention it now, I, I remember actually the, the fact that uh, the first, I, I remember saying that uh, the first part of my raw journey was actually a gastronomical journey because I suddenly learned so much about yeah. taste like I, I did not know there was this kind of world of taste out there yeah uh, that's something raw food recipes and, and raw food in general definitely teaches you if you're open to listen to the, the tastes because it's yeah. it, it's an amazing trip it's true Aneta is saying that uh, I tried fenugreek but I tr stopped very quickly because it reminds me of the taste of chicken <laughs> Fenugreek is that? I don't even know what that is. Is that, it it's not fennel. Is it fennel? I think is so. Is it fennel or is it the, the seed? Or is it? Hmm. I don't remember. No. Um, another raw food recipe that we used to make a lot, uh, or not a lot, but when we made soups, sometimes we made soups, and and uh, one of the really, really, really nice soups. It, actually, something we should make again is orange avocado soup or oh, yeah. or clementines avocado mandarin uh, avocado soup you literally just make orange juice with fresh oranges or mandarins or whatever and then you blend it with an avocado and it becomes mm -hmm. this orange thick well does it become orange or does it become green i can't remember now but it it's uh, become kind of brown, brown. <laughs> Well, I don't remember it that bad. No, I think if I you keep the avocado, avocado content fairly low, you can get away with it pretty orange. And uh, I remember at one time we, we made this elaborate dinner for our parents, just for our parents. Uh, they had like some kind of anniversary or something, and we decided to give them a special gift, or it was maybe a birthday gift. I, I can't remember, but at least they sat down and we were sort of serving them as, as if they were in a restaurant with like seven dishes you know one after the other small gourmet style type stuff and one of the dishes was a, a sort of orange avocado soup with uh i think we put some um we garnished it yeah we garnished, we garnished it with uh, with like uh pine needles or something like that we put on top yeah. not to eat though but Nibble. that was good and we also made lasagna for them and we've done that at other times too where you where you make like uh you you use you basically shave off um, a zucchini on the along the length of it with like a cheese. Uh, I don't know what the English word is, but uh, Nor Norway has this cheese thing that you can take off like fine pieces like that. Um, yeah. And then you put them like this and then you put maybe some, uh, you make a pesto of like uh, sun-dried tomatoes and cherry tomatoes. You blend that up and you smear it out on the... Um, zucchini maybe over there you put some uh, cucumber then over there you put some uh, more of the pesto what else uh, um, some onion maybe maybe you have some onion in the in the actual pesto itself etc you just layer whatever you want basically a slicer that's the word yeah Audrey it's that's the right word you basically just layer different things and then there you have a lasagna and then better when you take the lasagna after assembling it you put it into the dehydrator mm -hmm. and you dehydrate it a little bit so it becomes even more dense and then then you cut it, it becomes a little bit warm it becomes a little bit warm too yeah so it kind of hits all yeah. that uh, all those cooked uh, food uh, uh, memories um, yeah actually I, I would like to have fun with some some raw food recipes again it's the, the thing we realized with raw food recipes was that it was just too much work it took so much time and um, it didn't give you what you needed you know you can't really sit down for dinner and eat a freaking zucchini 
uh, lasagna. There's no calories in there, you know, and uh, mixing it with the fruit and with, when you have the tomato in there as well, and then you want to eat some bananas beforehand or something, it's just doesn't mm -hmm. work. So and it sort it of faded mix, out. It doesn't mix well with dates either. That's dates and tomatoes is kind of bad mix. And um, for sure, it's like you, you need to actually have quite a lot of dates in most recipes you make because you need it to have uh, sweetness. sweetness. Yeah, because when you cook tomatoes and when you cook stuff, it becomes sweeter. Um, you want to, yeah, so the, the ultimate thing if you're making a tomato sauce raw is to have some dates in there with the tomatoes. So mm -hmm. so ultimately, it becomes a fun thing. And I think that's this is how it was for us uh, under when we were doing it as well. It was something fun. It wasn't, we didn't do it because we were desperate for, for some cooked food or some, like, we weren't desperate for anything else. We were happy with the fruit. But yeah, we, we liked playing around in the kitchen. We still do. And so we just yeah make up some fancy raw vegan gourmet stuff and especially when you can keep it low in nuts like with the soup and with the lasagna and that sort of thing uh it's yeah it can be a lot of fun playing around with uh, with stuff in the kitchen mm -hmm. um just to touch on the s uh, sweetness again yeah. uh, i remember both of us coming to a point where we like we talked about every time we had a, a raw food dish that failed uh, it was because it wasn't sweet, basically. Uh, we re realized pretty quickly that they all have to be pretty sweet because uh, when you're eating, when you when you do just like something that's cauliflower based, so that, such as cauliflower rice, it ends up being really bland unless you use salt. Um, but even if you do use salt, it's still you just you don't really want to eat just like plain cauliflower raw cauliflower with salt it's like that's disgusting so th it becomes delicious once you add that sweet dressing right. right so it's that's why all all the people everyone eating salads they put a sweet dressing on their salad you know mm -hmm. um that sweetness it's just all about the sweetness we humans we want the sweetness um what about you Aneta? have you uh we, we we asked Audrey earlier about the raw food restaurants and stuff. Have you had any really nice dishes at the raw food restaurants before? Um, we did we did go to a, res, a restaurant here in Norway once uh, called uh, Herpero, which is yeah we've been there like, like three times or something. Yeah, I think it's uh, it would be like totally raw or something yeah. in uh, English, and they had pretty good food. Um, Definitely. I remember there was a, like a hummus there, uh, very good. Uh, hummus is something we've tried to make at several locations, um, but the problem is you can use uh, raw sprouted chickpeas, but it becomes kind of like it has this weird taste. Yeah, it's kind of gritty and it yeah. doesn't really work. And then it digests really poorly. Yeah, but how have we tried to make? Uh, have you had a good substitute for it? Yeah, we made it once with the uh, like zucchini, right? Like uh, instead of like instead of using nuts as a base to get something creamy, uh, whether it be a, like an Alfredo sauce, sauce or if it be a hummus or even a uh, some kind of cheese, uh, it's normal to use a lot of nuts. But we found out what if we use zucchini instead? So we would cut out the green parts of zucchini and just use all the white part and blend that up, and that became that becomes like an almost creamy sort of whitish thing and if you add in a little bit of nuts a little bit of seeds or even a little bit of avocado but if you want to preserve the white color you add in a little bit of cashew nuts or um, uh, pine nuts or something like that and then that becomes quite a creamy sauce almost like a hummus but i'm not sure if we uh, it's not really fully a hummus i think once we even tried blending cauliflower mm, maybe it's you know the thing is the way i see it if the food is good on its own, if you enjoy eating it like tomatoes or paprikas or, or cucumbers or even zucchinis, like they're not really that enjoyable. But if you can eat it and enjoy it somewhat, that's probably going to be a good choice to use in the, uh, when you're making a recipe. Uh, but if it's something that's kind of disgusting on its own or very bland, like cauliflower, uh, then it's probably just better not to use it because you, you're going to have to rely so much on other things like sweet dates or stimulants like salt uh, in order to make it tasty that it's just going to become this 
like they do in the raw food restaurants where there's just like 15 ingredients in this thing and it's just so concentrated and stimulant rich yeah. um uh, actually um uh, there's a lot of uh, people who when they make juice recipes uh just throw anything in the juicer and the same goes for making recipes in, in general raw recipes um yeah it's basically just more of what you said uh if the if the ingredient doesn't taste good on its own it's not never going to make the dish any better by you adding it to it uh, uh so it's like if you have a juice and um you, you're gonna make a juice and you have some leftover i don't know uh, carrots that were really bad tasting don't put them in the juicer because it's gonna make the juice it's gonna water out the juice with the bad taste yeah, that's so a really good point. So stick to the stick to the good ingredients. Yeah, it's that's what it is. Like you can't you can get away with putting a bad tomato in a tomato sauce that you're cooking. Mm -hmm. Kind of. It would be better if you didn't, but you can get away with it that way. But it, when you're doing raw, you, you gotta keep all the ingredients has to be high quality. Same thing with smoothie. People say, Oh, I had like a really bad watermelon, so I'm just gonna make a smoothie or I'm gonna make a juice. And then it then it becomes enjoyable. Well, you you shouldn't really eat it if it's not if it's not enjoyable. It's low quality. You got to throw it away. That's what you do with bad food. Yeah. Um, speaking yeah. of uh, speaking of smoothies, we do have some smoothie recipes. We definitely do. But but uh, before we go there, because uh, I had I have this thought that's sort of more related to what we we're just talking about. So we'll, let's just hold that thought for a little bit. Uh, I just wanted to say also that. Um, what are you doing when you're making raw food recipes? Um, well, you're not cooking. So the tools that you have to your, you know, the way you make raw food interesting in the kitchen is to play around with texture, shape. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then the food itself. Consistency is sort of, sort of like texture. So you're playing around. The, the knife is an important tool. Spiralizer is an important tool. Uh, slicers are an important tool. Colors. Jul what? Colors. You eat Co with your colors. eyes. First. Yeah, you play, you're playing around with the foods and you have to make them look good because it's a lot of, it has to do with the eyes a lot, the color and the shape. Um, and you want to create, like the, the thing is, a really thinly sliced cucumber feels almost tastes different than a thickly sliced cucumber and certainly very different from eating a whole cucumber uh that's the same with smoothies make a banana smoothie tastes quite different from eating bananas so by changing the texture and the shape by cutting it in special ways that's how you play around in the raw food kitchen and then you can also do the dehydration stuff which gives you another tool to sort of modify the water content and therefore the, the density or the concentration of the food mm -hmm. uh, yeah but yeah let's talk about smoothies yeah i was going to uh, put my arm there like casually but then it's like it's there's it's rounded oh, yeah. so it doesn't work i, I want to rest my hands but there's no I just remember. have to sit like this um yeah we we started out we've tried everything in smoothies mm -hmm. um, for the record, bananas and tomatoes is not a good combination for today. Absolutely yeah, talk about, disgusting. You made that once, right? Yeah. Well, it was actually the other way around. I'm, I was going to make a dressing for my um, salad, and I didn't have any dates, I think. So I was like, hmm, I, I have to add something sweet because these tomatoes aren't good on their own. Uh, OK, well, I think you suggested like maybe banana. <laughs> and I tried, and it was just the most disgusting thing I've ever tried. Oh, it's horrible. Um, but but yeah, we've tried everything in bananas, uh, as banana smoothies, or rather other types of smoothies as well. Um, but we've always, almost, almost always had uh, bananas as the base of the smoothie, and that's the thing that succeeds for us the most, I think. Yeah, definitely. I mean, a smoothie without bananas, that just doesn't, doesn't work. for. I, I don't like it. Uh, you know when you make smoothies with just lots of berries and greens and some dates i don't know you just get this there's all these seeds in there and the, it becomes and then there's the mix of acid fruit and dates which is like you know sweet fruit and acid fruit doesn't go well together so when you mix berries with bananas or dates it becomes it just 
blah, 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 blah. My stomach is just like, I drink it. And then there's just like this, all this bubbles mm -hmm. in my stomach. And it just feels terrible. And I can hear how the smoothie is moving down like, blah, 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 like this. But when I'm leaving, that's always what happens when you, when I mix acid fruit with sweet fruit, same goes for tomatoes and dates in the tomato sauce. Yeah. Um, so just yeah, yeah. Quick, uh, Aneta is saying, as I had afterwards, I felt heavy, so I don't do restaurants often. Too bad I can't add any picture in here. Two to three weeks ago, I eat beets from the oven. Next day, I literally look, <laughs> literally look like I'm pregnant. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You got to learn the hard way, right? I mean, there's so many things we have to learn the hard way. Yeah, it's really the only way, and we've learned the hard way for sure. Uh, I remember yeah. that time when we tried to eat the whole meal, basically, of uh, different types of coal, like broccoli or uh, cauliflower and stuff. Dip, Cabbage. Dip yeah. in a raw corn dressing. Fuck. Oh, we were so yeah, we angry. literally ate the whole meal of, of cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli. Know, like kilo, at least. It was terrible. It was just like, hell no, I'm not touching raw cruciferous vegetables ever again. Mm -hmm. And we didn't, except that one time in Costa Rica. All right. Well, when we were eating uh, Chris Kendall's stuff. Or... Yeah. He, he makes he, some really nice stuff. Yeah, he's like, he's so good, Jeff, because he... He really thinks outside the box. I mean, the whole pizza-based thing is pretty <laughs> crazy, right? Pretty good idea. Yeah, he he. If you're looking for a like low fat, pretty clean, or low to moderate fat, let's say, and pretty clean, pretty healthy type raw food recipes, definitely check out Chris Kendall. He makes some really cool stuff. But but still, I mean, it didn't feel good, right? When we even when we ate his stuff with the cauliflower and stuff, it didn't feel as good as fruit and. So I don't know. I, I kind of think as if you're if you need to make recipes to make your raw food diet work. Mm -hmm. No, I, I don't know. I'm not. I don't know what I was going to say because or how I would say it because the truth is everyone's different in terms of how they, how they psychologically relate to food. So for some people, it can be nice to have these raw food recipes, um, but it's a fine line to walk. I think between succeeding on a on a healthy diet uh, and sort of not succeeding because of these recipes but um i think uh the thing here is that when when we're making recipes every single time we're trying to imitate uh what we've had before uh, or not yeah uh, what we had before in the in the way that like culturally speaking we've been eating cooked food and recipes for our entire life so it's natural to want to do that and it's okay and it can be done with the minimal health problems mm. you can live your whole life eating tomato salad uh, for dinner every day and it, it's you're going to be top of your health pretty much um, and i think if that's the compromise you have to do to um, eat really healthy um, it's, not it's a, a big, good guy yeah, yeah it's and not a big compromise because, because like most people most people don't want necessarily to have bananas for dinner because it's exactly. so culturally same with us i mean we don't really like bananas for dinner either it's uh, it's important to consider that cultural that cultural adaption that cultural conditioning that we've had our whole life and and even going past our life just like our whole ancestry going back hundreds and thousands of years this kind of dinner mentality and stuff. I think that's a that's a big reason why people li like to make recipes and make uh, salads is because it's that I'm making something in the kitchen. I'm sitting down with a plate. I'm eating it with a fork, that kind of stuff, instead of just stuffing your face with fruit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's useful you, to play around with recipes f to do that. And um, But to, back to the smoothies. Yeah, Audrey says smoothies definitely need bananas and they do. And um, mm -hmm. Aneta says she loves zucchinis. Cool. Yeah. Zucchinis, they're very versatile. Probably zucchinis are one of the most versatile uh, fruits. It's a fruit, actually, yeah. uh, in the kitchen if, you're, if you want to play around and make dinner type of, of stuff. Zucchinis, cucumbers, peppers, tomatoes, those sort of non-sweet fruits. That's what you want to play around with in the kitchen if you want to make cool recipes. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, smoothies need bananas. They do. They so what, I've what come to. Well, 
my favorite smoothie is what I make every single day almost, which is just bananas. Literally, I just ripe bananas, a little bit of water. You can put more water or less water depending on how fluid you want it. Is it mom and dad? Maybe. I just need to check. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Mom and dad, uh, as Matt's mentioned, is going to our grandfather's birthday. So they're probably right around the corner there. Um, what I was going to say? Uh, we'll wait for Matt to come back. No, I don't have to wait. He knows this. I can just say it. Uh, I just mix more water if I wanted more fluid, less if I wanted less, uh, thicker, basically. Um, and that's my favorite smoothie. I just eat that every day. Um, if I... All right, I am back. Well, who was it? It was our dad. Oh, you had to send him away? Yeah, he wasn't going to say anything special. He was just, just saying hi? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I just said, said basically that uh, my favorite smoothie is bananas. So yeah, uh, the interesting thing here is that we have tried everything in our banana smoothies, and slowly over time, we we it came down to like three different, I would say, other like including banana plain bananas. There were four smoothie recipes that I used to make, and all of them I've tried several times, and I've come to the conclusion that plain bananas are always better some reason as long as they're ripe you want to tell us about the recipes yeah um the most simple one is just bananas with coconut water uh the coconut water you get from uh the white uh, young thai coconuts and that is pretty good um, and then there's mango and then uh, another one is avocado right yeah that's pretty much it <laughs> yeah that's pretty, pretty much it uh, they're all pretty good even like especially like mango and banana just like mostly bananas like 80 percent bananas and a little bit of mango it's so good but it's just i don't know why it might be just personal preference but i always come back to just oh i i just prefer only banana it's just thicker it's creamier it's more calorie dense it's just more satisfying i find i, I don't know it also digests a lot better digests better too but so yeah, Aneta smoothie, three bananas, handful of spinach or parsley, a little bit of orange. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, cool. spinach is actually a, one thing we have. Uh, I've forgotten about that, but I made a lot of banana spinach smoothies. And they were pretty good. Yeah. As long they were as you definitely blend, good. blend it perfectly. Uh, when it's not blended perfectly, it's like... Yeah, you'd amazing. want a, like a strong blender so you can get it really creamy. Audrey says banana mango is her favorite. Yeah, or plain banana. Yeah, same as me. Definitely banana mango. But you should all try banana avocado too. It's amazing. You, you just make a banana smoothie with like quarter of an avocado or half an avocado even. That's it. It's yeah. incredible taste. Incredible taste. Yeah, and most people don't know about it. I remember us saying it to someone uh, in Costa Rica once. And they were like, yeah, why? Why haven't I tried that? No, uh, it's a crazy combination, and it's it's perfect, perfect combination. Definitely. Um, so, I guess wrapping up, let's just let's just quickly go through our view, or not our view, but um, what kind of recipes we're making these days, or are we making any recipes at all? Is it going? Com are we making complex dishes and that sort of thing? Uh, I will just say immediately that now that we are also eating some cooked foods and stuff. I go through some periods now and then, and I think that this is true for Mads too, right? That there are some periods now and then where we like to make something in the kitchen. Like, for example, when I first got to Nis, I, I, I started playing around with, you know, uh, making so sauces or like cooking up uh, uh, eggplant with some onion and then eating that and mushrooms and then sort of in a frying pan without oil, but just sort of frying it basically not really the best but um with water and then eating that with my sweet potatoes and stuff but every time i do that i always come back to the simplicity again i like like nowadays i just eat sweet potatoes that's pretty much it actually i do use a little bit of tabasco but it's it's, it's i mean uh, the amount of vinegar and salt and chili in a, in a tabasco in a few drops of tabasco is like literally insignificant but yeah. 
So pretty straight up simple. Uh, although at periods I do play around in the kitchen, but I always fall back to the simplicity. And this is true with the salads and with the smoothies as well, like we just talked about. I I enjoy sometimes playing around in the kitchen, but then I just eh, I just prefer eating and out of a taste preference too. I just prefer eating simple, just filling my mouth with one single food, mono meal style, and just actually enjoying that food, actually tasting the sweet potato rather than having a bunch of sauce on top of it. Yeah, um, and I'm happy I've, I've gotten to this place as well. Um, but for sure, I'm like, um, this was how I felt when I was eating the raw uh, food, the recipes, uh, after coming from a cooked food diet, eating really heavily digest, uh, heavily processed foods, uh, you know, raw food recipes are fresh. They're alive with taste. Uh, it's it's yeah it can be amazing yeah so yeah we don't i'm not going to speak for you or but i know this is true for you too as well i think that we generally don't make recipes we we've never been into playing around that much in the kitchen although you you had a period where you were actually yeah. really loving uh kitchen uh stuff yeah uh but i think that was more on the cooked uh kind yeah, of thing. yeah i mean it started yeah, it started with uh, raw food recipes. Um, uh, yeah, actually, it started with raw food recipes before I went to somewhere. And uh, trans uh, they went over to cooked food dishes, and I was like for a year almost making food for like three hours a day. Yeah, simple, clean, low fat, vegan stuff, but uh, really, you know, really making it to perfection, making a tomato sauce that was just like, oh my God. But then I think same for you as what happens for me, right? We just sort of get, I don't know. It's just like, I just want simple. Yeah, it's like, I would say it's almost tiring. I I, I'm, I struggle to come up with a good word for it, but because it's not too, it's not that uh, cooked food um, or, or sorry, it's not that recipes in general are intense necessarily, but they are they're like exhausting. I like a lot of mental energy. There's a lot of yeah. preparation. There's a lot of, of keeping track of everything and, no, and no, measuring no. I'm stuff. Talk, I'm talking about the actual eating process. Right. What, when yeah. I'm eating it, it's uh, eating a bite of a banana or a bite of sweet potato is so simple and just like it's just food. Whereas uh, when it's all saucy or uh, crunchy or hamburgery, yeah. it uh, makes me go a little, like. It's too much mental energy going into an Yeah, it's less tasty. You, you actually taste less. It, it's more like stimulating, a lot of stuff going on in the mouth, but it's less satisfying. Yeah. So anyway, that's all for today. Uh, you know, recipes, they're cool. Play around with them, have fun in the kitchen. But yeah, it's the simple stuff always comes back to be the best. Aneta asks, do you have some junk vegan meals? There are some times that I do that just for fun or like, it, I guess it all depends on what you define as junk. But um, for example, if I want a pizza, I'll have a pizza. Every now and then I do have a pizza. Uh, I would say that's pretty junky, but uh, still, yeah, no big deal. But it sets me, you know, it puts, sets me back for another, for a couple of days. I'm not feeling my best. So usually I just, after that pizza, I usually just feel like eh, I, uh, I want to go back to just clean again because I just like feeling good, you know? Mm -hmm. And you know, in terms of raw recipes, just add a lot of nuts, and, and then you have the become junk. Oh my god! I just have to mention on the end, <laughs> Christmas dinners because we've been uh, without going in depth. We made a lot of we we made a few fully raw Christmas dinners with lots of nuts and seeds. We made like these nut loaves based on nuts and seeds, and one Christmas I puked. I I I literally threw up the day after. I was literally like sick for two days straight after that meal. We ate so many nuts. Yeah, and it was terrible. Like I actually think nuts are worse than meat. Like literally, you are well, better. Not necessarily, but uh, because it, it depends, depends on, on the amount. Yeah, no, but it depends on what what you look at. If you eat the a huge amount of meat versus a huge amount of nuts, the nuts are going to make you feel way worse than the meat. But of course, the meat comes with hormones and cholesterol and these kind of negative aspects. But just in terms of digestion and how it feels, oh my God, nuts are the worst. Um, 
but it was fun. We did play around. We made like lots of Christmas dishes. We made like a mushroom sauce, uh, like a gravy with like mushroom in it. And and also I remember, I just want to mention as well, the, the burger that we used to make when we took like huge tomatoes and cut them in two or, or three. And then we put like spinach and avocado and basil and stuff in between. And then we wrapped it with a huge spinach leaf or something like that. And we just like, oh. Yeah, that's actually one of my favorite recipes. It's funny, I didn't think that. I always made, I used to make it when I went to Nice, where you are now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really, 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 really tasty. And especially one time we also blended up corn and then uh, made put corn on top and it was like an American ranch, we like like a ranch dressing almost. We mixed in some spices. I don't remember what it was. And it was just this amazing burger. We also dehydrated the burger once and made, I mean, we've done lots of recipes, but all good fun but uh, but in the end it just comes back to clean simple fruits uh, and even some clean cooked vegetables and stuff mm-hmm. all right yes audrey definitely uh, simple raw is the best tastes the best feels the best easiest but yeah kitchen kitchen is a is a fun place to play around sometimes yeah all right, All well, right. I think that's pretty much it. Let's go make some recipes or uh, not. Yeah, I'm going to start cooking dinner. It's going to be just boiled sweet potatoes, boiled cauliflower, boiled, boiled broccoli, boiled carrot. I have it all over there, and that's it. And then I just eat that with a little Tabasco. <laughs> all so. right. Thanks, well, f- everyone, for joining us. Uh, what, Matt? I was going to say that. Oh. Thanks, everyone for joining us. Thanks, Aneta, Audrey, and anyone else who might have joined us there without joining the chat. That's fine. You don't have to go in the chat if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you're watching the recording, thanks for watching. Go to patreon.com and sign up there if you want to join the next live hangout. And uh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Uh, Have a good day. Enjoy your food in whatever form it comes. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys. Bye.